Hello friends and welcome back to our homestead. Today I'm going to be making homemade sour cream. I am blessed that we have local raw dairy farms, family owned dairy farms where I can go and purchase raw milk. And when you buy unhomogenized, unpasteurized milk, what happens is that when it's chilled in a fridge, when it's, the milk gets cold, the fat or the cream salads, they rise up to the top and you can skim it and you got yourself cream. And that's the cream we're gonna be using for making homemade sour cream. And it's delicious, let me tell you, it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. It's not as thick as the store-bought, but you may ask me, well, why is it not as thick? Well, it's because homemade means no chemicals added, no stabilizers added. See, when you purchase sour cream, I challenge you, you're in a grocery store, you're at the, uh, the dairy aisle and you're looking at cream cheeses and sour creams and creams and everything else. I want you to pick up your sour cream, turn it around and start looking at the ingredients. They may tell you that it is milk, whole milk or skim milk if it's low fat, sour cream and then enzymes and that's it. They don't have to tell you anything else. But have you ever thought about how in the world did skim milk that has zero cream in it, zero fat in it, how did it become thick? Did you ever think about that? Well, it's because they're adding certain chemicals, stabilizers, to make it stable as a thick mass. Okay, that's how they, they do add cultures, of course, but that's how they make it thick is by using stabilizers so sometimes low fat uh, fat free is not always good for you because they alter or they add substances to um to meet the the requirements of thickness of the sour cream so i'm going to be using raw milk raw cream i should say from my milk to make homemade sour cream and I'm sure I'm gonna receive questions uh, below in the comment section. And then you're gonna say, Lilia, where we live, we don't have access to raw milk or I don't wanna use raw milk. What should I do? That is why I'm gonna show you the second method, how we can make sour cream at home, also using clean ingredients and making good quality sour cream. So let's start making homemade sour cream. First, let's focus on the raw milk. We're gonna be uh, working with raw milk. And if you look closer, this just came out of the fridge, so the bottles are nice and cold. All of this at the top, do you see the different color? That is cream. The cream will rise, okay? So I need to take this out of these um, bottles. And this farm provides milk in glass bottles and in plastic, but I prefer glass bottles. So um, all I'm gonna be doing is just, I need to skim that cream off. And uh, because the opening is quite small, um, I am not able to skim it with a spoon or anything like that because it's very small. So I'm actually gonna be using a my turkey baster. I use it only for this purpose. I clean it, I disinfect it in between. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And also I need a clean vessel. And I use, this is a, a quart jar. I don't need a quart jar, I really need a pint jar, but I only have wide mouth quart jar. And I'm gonna be filling them up. So I'm gonna be skimming the top, the tops off just like this. I'm not putting it deep. I'm just putting it deep enough to remove the cream and putting it in here, okay? It's not gonna be that much because it's, um, these cows are not Jersey cows. Jersey cows produce lots and lots of cream. These are not Jersey cows, they're mixed, so the cream content is not as high as a Jersey cow would. But still, I'm very, very happy. Look how beautiful and yellow it is. So all I'm doing, I'm just going to the top and just removing that cream from each and every bottle, just like this. All I need is cream, I don't need any milk. Okay, so most of the cream I skimmed from the top and this milk is gonna be used to make more other delicious things such as kefir, 
and homemade yogurt. All right, but all of this beautiful cream, all this beautiful cream is gonna be going to make homemade sour cream. As we call it, smitana. Smitana, good word to learn, smitana. All right, so right now it's nice and cold because it just came out of the fridge. And this is going to turn what? Sour cream, it's gonna turn sour, that's all it is. So I'm gonna put a cover on. If you have a plastic cover, it's fine. I have a metal cover. And I'm not gonna put it very tight. It's just gonna be on because I don't want anything to get in, like bugs, whatever. Um, but it's gonna sit just like this on my kitchen counter, or better yet, in slightly warm place, slightly warm place. So if you like to put it into oven with a pilot, light on for the next 24 hours or if your kitchen is nice and warm it can sit right there on your kitchen counter in the winter months when it's the wood stove going i like to keep it near the wood stove literally on a shelf near the wood stove where it's nice and warm and it turns sour pretty quickly one of the wonderful things about raw unpasteurized milk is the fact that it doesn't go bad it doesn't go bad mold doesn't grow on it bad things don't become to grow on it, it turns, it clubbers, it, it turns sour. And the longer it sits and turns sour, the stronger the smell will be and the more curds it will be. So same thing with sour cream. So because my kitchen is a little cool right now, it's already October, so it's a little cool, uh, it, this may take about 24 hours, maybe even more. So it's okay if it takes a little bit more. What I'm going to be doing is what I normally do is I take a spoon, I come in, I test it and make sure that it's solidifying. After 24 hours, I'm going to put it in a fridge. I'm going to put it in a fridge overnight or so. And then the next day, it's going to be nice and thick. If it's not all the way thick, like some, how sometimes here in the United States, we like sour cream super thick, like the point that the spoon is standing in it, right? Um, then it's okay if we strain it a little bit over muslin, like a cheesecloth or something like that, over something and strain it a little bit. But I am okay if it's not totally thick. Then it resembles more of creme fraiche that are, is very popular in Europe instead of sour cream. They don't have sour cream, they have creme fraiche. So this will become thick, will become a little sour, a little tangy, it's gonna be delicious sour cream because this is what cream that will turn sour and that's how you make raw homemade sour cream now in case you don't have raw sour cream or raw milk to make sour cream let me show you the second method where you require only two ingredients to make good and delicious sour cream at home using store-bought pasteurized products okay so for store-bought ingredients we're going to be needing heavy whipping cream and it's up to you what kind of brand you buy but it does work better with a heavy cream or heavy whipping cream um, rather than half and half or regular cream honestly it works much much better so because this is an ultra pasteurized pasteurized see how it says ultra pasteurized that means everything possible live organisms are killed in this cream it's completely gone so here I have uh, 16 ounces, and I'm gonna be pouring it into a very clean jar, very clean jar. It's gonna go in here. Okay, so it's gonna go all in here. To this cream, this heavy whipping cream, I'm gonna be adding buttermilk. This is cultured buttermilk, and you can use any buttermilk you choose. The only what's important is that it should say that it's cultured buttermilk. And that will be our culture for this heavy whipping cream to become sour cream, to become smitana. All right, so how much? So for one pint, which is 16 ounces, I'm going to be putting four to five tablespoons of this buttermilk. Okay, four or five tablespoons. It's up to you. So I think I'm gonna put only four today. And guess what? That's it. Okay, that's it, just like this. 
and we're gonna stir it all in so it's nicely, nicely distributed throughout. Okay, stir, 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 just like this. It's nice and thick because it's a whipping cream, okay? Or heavy cream will work as well. All right, just like this. It's all stirred up. I'm gonna put a cover on as well. Not very tight, but it's gonna go on as well because we don't want anything to get in either. And again, it's gonna sit on our kitchen counter for the next 24 hours and do its thing. And then tomorrow I am going to check, make sure it's thick enough and I'm gonna store it in the fridge. So homemade sour cream is good in the fridge for the next two, three weeks. But trust me here in the Slavic house that we are, we use sour cream, smetana on everything every soup, every stew, we put a little dollop of sour cream. So I just ask any of our friends and family, they will testify. So it's gonna go very, very quickly. As far as the raw sour cream, again, it doesn't go bad. It just becomes stronger over time because raw milk doesn't go bad. It just changes into something else. So friends, um, let me show you what it's gonna be looking like tomorrow and don't forget to label it so you know exactly what's in here okay 24 hours later and here are our sour creams one is from raw milk where i skimmed off just the tops of that cream that floats to the top of the raw milk bottles and this one is store-bought where we used ultra pasteurized whipping cream and buttermilk that had culture in it. So let's give it a taste. And I just wanna warn you that this did not have a chance to sit in the fridge yet. This was in a warm place where it was developing its culture, right? So let's give it a taste. And after, uh, after this, I'm gonna put them in the fridge and in the fridge, it's gonna solidify even more. All right, so let's take a look. I'm gonna bring the camera closer so I can show you guys. Okay, here's our raw sour milk, where all it did, it's just the cream became sour. And it's pretty thick, but not as thick as what you would see at the store, right? At the store bought. But um, I do know that this will solidify way more once it sits in the fridge. Okay, so let me give it a taste. I want to taste it. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's slightly tangy. It's very smooth. It's really, really good. I love this taste. So good. Okay, so and this one is from whipping cream with some buttermilk. It was also sitting in a warm place. And let's take a look. Oh, this is much thicker. Look, it's much, much thicker. You see that? So let's give it a taste as well. Just a little bit. Oh, it's really good too. This tastes a whole lot more like the store-bought, a whole lot more. But if you ask me which one I prefer, I prefer the taste of this one, but I'm telling you, this is not bad at all. Not bad at all. So um, yeah, right now I'm gonna put the covers on and it's gonna go in the fridge.